Hello, welcome to LMU Tri-State News. I'm Ashley Hurley. Thank you for joining us. The Campbell County Sheriff's Office announced Wednesday a Campbell County grand jury has indicted Lonnie Van with the first degree murder and kidnapping of missing La Follette woman Rhonda Doherty. 44 year old Dan is charged with two counts of first degree murder and one count of kidnapping. Doherty disappeared December 2nd in the Coolidge neighborhood. There had been speculation that her disappearance was connected to Lonnie Van, who was wanted for robbery. Van was captured in South Carolina where he is still being held and awaiting extradition to Campbell County where he will be held on a $1 million bond. Officials say they are continuing their search for Doherty. Van and Doherty attended the same church. Doherty's husband is also listed as a grand jury witness called to testify about Van's alleged inappropriate conduct with a student in an unrelated case. Van was formerly a teacher at a La Follette Middle School and was placed on suspension without pay in October 2013 after allegations of inappropriate conduct arose. A $10,000 reward is being offered for information in the Doherty case. A third person has been arrested in connection with the bank burglary and theft in Speedwell. 24-year-old Lucas Allen Brooks was arrested and charged with burglary, theft over $10,000, and vandalism over $10,000, along with other charges from previous incidents. On December 30th, the Claiborne County Sheriff's Office responded to a call that the burglar alarm was going off at the Commercial Bank branch located in Speedwell. After a brief investigation by the CCSO deputies and investigators, they located a suspicious vehicle in a remote area of Speedwell a short time after midnight. Along with the vehicle, they found the missing ATM machine. That night, officers arrested 30-year-old Amy K. Brooks in connection with the burglary. She is charged with burglary, theft, over, theft of property over $10,000, and vandalism over $10,000, as well as other previous warrants. 33-year-old Walter Sean Patterson of Speedwell was also arrested later in connection with the theft. He is charged with burglary, theft over $10,000, and vandalism over $10,000. All are being held in the Claiborne County Jail with no bond. According to Sheriff David Ray, the investigation is ongoing and other arrests are expected. This flu season, pharmacists say they have seen a staggering number of sick people coming through their doors. The most common symptoms of the flu this season are a fever, cough, runny nose, along with aches and chills. To get more information on the flu, we sat down with Dr. Jan Zirin at the DeBus College of Osteopathic Medicine, and here is what she has to say. Well, to not get the flu, if you stay healthy, you get enough sleep, you, you stay hydrated, you eat well, that counts a lot because then your own immune system can fight off this thing. It's people with diabetes and heart disease and lung problems who are very susceptible, and it makes flu a very dangerous illness for them. The washing hands is very, very important. There are people who will actually wear masks, and that's not a bad idea because they're not breathing it in, and if they think they're coming down with it, they might wear the mask to not spread it. I know at our clinic we have a little sign that says, if you think you're here for the flu, please put on one of the, the masks. And so every so often we'll see a patient who comes in wearing one of the little surgical masks, which is a smart idea. When it comes to precautions, this is what Dr. Zirin says about taking the flu shot. I know our clinic here at the university, we have flu shots as soon as we can get them in the beginning of the fall. And they're available for patients and community and students and we like to give them. The peak of the flu is December, January, February and it takes two, maybe three weeks for the flu shot to build up the immunity. So we like you to get the shot maybe in the fall so that it has a chance to protect through the whole season. It's only good for one season and so that's why people need a new flu shot the next year. The flu vaccine is available at most walk-in clinics and the Claiborne County Health Department is working to protect the entire community by providing free flu vaccinations to area residents.
You must make an appointment to receive the flu vaccine. For more information on this season's flu, you can visit the Center for Disease Control website at cdc.gov. Lincoln Memorial University is taking precautions against fire safety here on campus and just last week John O'Connor visited campus to discuss the sprinkler systems with fire department members and maintenance here on campus. They are taking aim on how these sprinkler systems will help when it comes to fire safety. Sprinkler systems are rated either wet pipe systems or dry pipe systems. The wet pipe systems are the best, they're the most efficient, they're the least costly, they work the best, but they're designed for warm occupancies where you don't have freezing temperatures. Obviously ice and piping systems will cause uh, havoc and in a, in a location where you have winter conditions and or unheated buildings where you know that you can't maintain at least 45 degrees, you have to install dry pipe systems which are basically the same kind of piping systems but they're full of compressed air and there is a dry pipe valve which is a, a mechanism that holds the air pressure and water pressure uh, at, at bay and the compressed air inside the system will keep that water uh, from entering the system until you lose air pressure and then it's basically the same thing. It's full of water and, and it will open and uh, uh, discharge water through any opening, either a, be a broken line or a sprinkler head that goes off. Campus Fire Director Jamie Snow discusses with us how the colder months have a very unique difference when it comes to fire safety. Well, of course, everyone wants to put up a space here, put thing, you know, heat up the bathroom a little bit for when they get out of the shower. Also, around the holiday season, everyone has lights hanging up. You know, they need to be rated correctly so you don't start fires. Um, you know, curtains get caught on fire, certain fabric. And it's, you know, everyone's turning up the heat. There are a lot more devices being used electrically. And everyone just needs to be safe and know what they're doing so that they can enjoy everything, but be safe while they're doing it. Now coming up after the break, the new year brings a new semester here on campus at Lincoln Memorial University and also a restaurant staple here in the Tri-State area has a brand new location. We have that and more right after this. Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. You constantly ignore me. You barely eat anything healthy. You're half as active as you used to be. The pressure is just too much. I quit. Okay, I get it. I'll do better. Just please, don't leave. Okay, but remember, if I go, you go. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Get your yes, You're not it here. Yes, I am. No, 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 no. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, no. They want to help, no. but don't know how. Oh, you Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. It's a new year, which means a new semester for students here on campus.
Students in programs at the DeBest College of Osteopathic Medicine have been in classes since last week, but undergraduate students are making their way back to classes this week. Lincoln Memorial University serves a very diverse student body of 4,550 students from 45 states and 21 foreign countries. LMU offers a global curriculum in over 30 areas of study, including business, arts and humanities, sciences, mathematics, education, and health professions. Graduate and professional programs are available in education, nursing, physician assistant studies, jurisprudence, veterinary medicine, and osteopathic medicine. Spring break for students will be held March 30th through April 3rd, and classes will end May 1st with final exams held May 4th through the 8th. Last Friday, the doors opened of a new location of Subway Restaurant here in Harrogate. The new restaurant is located next to the building where the restaurant previously occupied. If you have visited the restaurant in previous months from lunch through dinner, you most likely waited in line with other patrons. The new location is larger to accommodate the number of customers from throughout the tri-state area. A new addition to Subway is a drive through option that is open until midnight to help out those who work late and also who are in school. The dining room will remain open until 10 o'clock each night and they also offer a Keurig coffee service in the dining room. And don't forget, along with their lunch menu, they also serve breakfast as well. They also have a call-ahead service for your lunch convenience by calling 423-869-7827. There's more talk of increasing gas taxes to pay for maintaining Tennessee roads. Highway projects that include busy roads in East Tennessee are getting pushed back because of worries about long-term federal funding. There are 200 projects on hold with some dating back as far as 30 years that cost $8 billion to finish and there is concern that half of TDOT's federal funding may drop next year. A push for Tennessee's Tennessee's first tax increase on gas in a quarter century is getting a closer look by Republican legislators who have historically opposed tax hikes of, hikes of any sort. It's not yet known how much the tax would increase because there hasn't been a proposed legislation presented yet. It's all just been discussion. However, a bill could possibly come as early as the upcoming legislative session, which starts this month. There's also talk right now about hiking the federal gas tax, and if that happens, it would be the first time since 1993 when gas was barely over a dollar a gallon. Now for the latest on what is happening in the world of sports, let's turn to Adam Haley. Let's start on the hardwood with the Lady Rail Splitters, and the turn of the calendar into 2015 has not been a good one. Last Wednesday, the ladies hosted Anderson University in a rematch of last season's quarterfinal tournament game. LMU struggled early, committing 13 turnovers in the first half while only shooting 36% from the field. And they found themselves trailing by 11, 41 to 30 at the halftime break. In the second half, Anderson continued to pour it on, increasing their lead to as much as 16 points. And then the Lady Rail Splitters started chipping away. LMU outscored Anderson 31-19 over the last eight minutes, but got no closer than two points before the Trojans pulled out the 82-78 win. Shea Coker led LMU with scoring with 18 points. On Saturday, the ladies traveled to Wingate, North Carolina to face the Bulldogs. Once again, a cold shooting first half in double-digit turnovers doomed the ladies from the start as they went into the break trailing 40-22. Wingate continued their dominance in the second half, never letting their lead fall below 20 points, and the Bulldogs strolled to an 88-65 win. Asia Lee played the entire game and let LMU in scoring with 20 points. Now at 7-7 overall and 4-4 in the South Atlantic Conference, the ladies will return home on Wednesday to face Tusculum College at 6 p.m., and they'll be at home on Saturday, January 17th, when they host Queens University at 2 p.m. The LMU Rail Splitters went into their game last Wednesday with Anderson ranked fourth in the country in the NABC poll, and they were looking for revenge as the Trojans have won the last three against LMU inside Tex Turner. Early on, it looked like it might be a dogfight as Anderson led with, by six with 11.40 in the first half. But from there, LMU started their run. LMU eventually took the lead about four minutes later and would take an 11-point lead into the break 34-23. In the second half, Anderson would try to make runs at LMU, but the Rail Splitters' lead would never dip below double digits, and LMU eventually beat the Trojans 73-54. to 
Luquan Choice led LMU in scoring with 20 points, while Doran Pinson was one, was, run, was one rebound short of a double-double as he had 11 points and 9 rebounds. On Saturday, they also traveled to Wingate, North Carolina to face Brian Good and the Bulldogs. LMU came out of the gate hot as they shot 55% in the first half, and the Rail Splitters took the halftime lead 40-26. to in the second half, Gerald Simmons showed that he could be a big factor for his team as he scored 16 of his 26 points, which included going 4 of 5 from three-point range. As an LMU picked up their 14th win of the season, 81 to 62. LMU as a team shot 11 of 18 from the three-point line for 61% in the game. The Rail Splitters will be back at home inside the Tech's Turner Arena on Wednesday night when they face the Tusculum Pioneers at 8 p.m. and they'll host Queen University on Saturday, January 17th at 4 p.m. The conference championships are set in the NFL. In the AFC, the New England Patriots will face the Indianapolis Colts. The Patriots defeated the Baltimore Ravens 35-31 in a game where Patriots quarterback Tom Brady threw for a postseason franchise record 367 yards and three touchdowns to lead New England to their fourth straight conference championship. The Colts' defense shut down Denver Broncos quarterback Peyton Manning to advance to their first conference championship since 2010 with a 24-13 win. This will be the third conference championship between the Patriots and the Colts since 2004. In the NFC, the top two seeds advanced as the Seattle Seahawks will face the Green Bay Packers. Seattle advanced with a hard-fought 31-17 win over Carolina. Cam Chancellor's 90-yard interception return with 5 minutes and 55 seconds left in the fourth was the final nail in the Panthers' coffin. Green Bay had to score two touchdowns late to beat Dallas 26-21. The game, however, wasn't without controversy as it looked like Dallas was going to pull off the win with a Des Bryant 31-yard pass reception. However, it was reversed after a coach's challenge and was ruled that Bryant was bobbling the ball when he hit the ground and therefore it was ruled incomplete. This will be the Seahawks' second straight conference championship while it's the first for the Packers since 2011. Now that's all for sports, however stay tuned. Joseph Lewis will be in here just next with his movie reviews right after this break. This is the moment I knew. His future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Hey, Mom. Hey, did yeah. you take your medicine? Oh, gosh, I forgot it. Her nurse. Do you need a claim number? Her personal assistant. Look, can I just grab a... Her housekeeper. Her cook. Her accountant. When I started taking care of Mom, I didn't realize the challenge of playing so many roles. But above all, I'm still her daughter. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving to connect with experts and other caregivers. Together we can better care for ourselves and the ones we love. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. For those dealing with the daily struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community with experts and other caregivers to help us better care for ourselves and the ones we love. Hello, I'm Joseph Lewis, bringing you all the latest information in the world of movies. Tops at the box office this weekend included the Liam Neeson starring action sequel Taken 3, which opened at number one with $40 million despite a general consensus of mostly negative reviews. Following at number two was the civil rights docudrama Selma, starting strong in its first week as a wide release with 11 million. And rounding out the top three was the Disney musical Into the Woods, adding another 10 million to its total domestic gross, now sitting at just over $100 million. 
coming to theaters this week is Black Hat, the latest film from Michael Mann, the filmmaker responsible for numerous modern favorites of the crime genre, including Thief, Heat, and Collateral. Chris Hemsworth stars as Nicholas Hathaway, a long-term convict tapped by an alliance of American and Chinese agencies to aid in the pursuit and capture of an elusive cyber criminal seeking to take down the international banking network. From there, the chase leads through Chicago, Los Angeles, Jakarta, and Hong Kong, and fans of the director can certainly look forward to his penchant for gorgeous locations, intense action sequences, and kinetic visuals. Black Hat opens this Friday, January 16th. Also opening this week is Paddington, the first and probably not the last big screen appearance of Michael Bond's beloved Bear, who previously appeared in more than 20 books and numerous television series. Skyfall's Ben Wishaw voices Paddington, and the story picks up when the young Bear travels from Peru to London in search of a home. After being taken in by Hugh Bonneville and Sally Hawkins' Mr. and Mrs. Brown, Paddington finds both his good fortune and his life at risk when he catches the attention of the heartless museum taxidermist Millicent, played by Nicole Kidman. Having already been released internationally and greeted by glowing critical acclaim, Paddington will undoubtedly prove to be a charming and whimsical delight for viewers of all ages, and the film can be seen in theaters this Friday. Lastly opening this week is The Wedding Ringer, a new comedy in which Frozen's Josh Gad stars as the good-hearted but socially inept Doug Harris, who finds himself on the cusp of his wedding day without a best man. Enter comedian Kevin Hart as Jimmy Callahan, the hotshot owner of Best Man Incorporated, a company dedicated to filling out wedding parties for grooms in need. As Doug and Jimmy proceed with their charade, an unexpected friendship forms and paves the way for misunderstandings, close calls, and countless other sitcom-style antics. Kaylee Cuoco Sweeting, Olivia Thirlby, and Los Jorge Garcia round out the supporting cast, and The Wedding Ringer begins playing nationwide this Friday, January 16th. Now playing in theaters is Top 5, a personal and frequently hilarious new film from the immensely talented funny man Chris Rock, who writes, directs, and stars. Rock plays Andre Allen, a longtime comedian with aspirations toward becoming a serious actor, and Gabrielle Union plays his reality TV star fiancé, who inadvertently throws his life into turmoil when their upcoming wedding becomes the main attraction on her show. Meanwhile, Rosario Dawson co-stars as a New York Times journalist who snags an interview with Andre, a conversation that cuts deep and may irrevocably change the course of their lives. Many have likened Top 5 to the humorous but deeply autobiographical work of Woody Allen, and that comparison is dead on. Here Rock explores the pitfalls of stardom, the darkness in the spotlight, and the struggle to remain vital as an artist, and while it's all engaging on an intellectual level, what makes it work is how honest and funny Rock's writing is. Andre feels more like a down-to-earth person than his larger-than-life situation would suggest, and Rock's performance seems dedicated to making the character interesting and identifiable, as opposed to the actor simply playing himself. Rosario Dawson likewise lends the film a sense of lived-in credibility, creating a character who's sharp and confident on the outside but is slowly falling apart on the inside. The chemistry she and Rock drum up is very believable, and the fact that both characters are recovering alcoholics is explored insightfully and without any simple moralizing. Despite its sometimes heavy subject matter, Top 5 remains highly enjoyable, filled with numerous ribald, laugh-out-loud moments courtesy of Rock's outrageous, often self-deprecating sense of humor, and the considerable supporting cast goes a long way toward picking up the comedic slack, featuring Kevin Hart, Romani Malco, Tracy Morgan, and Cedric the Entertainer in key roles, as well as cameos from names such as Jerry Seinfeld, Whoopi Goldberg, and Adam Sandler. With huge laughs and memorable insights, Top 5 ranks as one of 2014's biggest surprises, heartfelt and hysterical in equal measure. That's all for this week in the world of movies. I'm Joseph Lewis, and we'll be back after these messages. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it.
preventing wildfires. That's all Smokey wants for his 70th birthday. Listen to me. I am captain of the track team. And, and if I'm late, She doesn't I'm really think she's going to get out of here, does she? Be nice. She's new. Hello, is anyone there? <gasps> wow. Even from our standards, you look awful. Oh, sweetie, what happened? Me? My friend Becky got to talk to this super cute boy, and I tried to act like I wasn't jealous, but I so totally was. And then out of nowhere, this concrete barrier just popped up. Maybe it was a semi. You mean you were driving? Yeah. I mean, I know the whole eyes on the road thing, but this was a super important text. Maybe you have to know, Becky. Uh, texting? Great. But I, it was only like five seconds, and I'm a really, really fast texter, so it wasn't even a big deal. Actually, has she texted me back yet? Wow, I get like no bars in this place. I wonder if they have Wi-Fi here. And that is going to do it for this week's LMU Tri-State News. Thank you for joining us. For everyone behind the scenes, I'm Ashley Hurley.